Today we're going to look at analogue to digital communication. We've already seen we can send information using radio waves for long and short wave radio. Mic waves can be used for mobile phones because they go through the atmosphere to satellites. We can use infrared for remote controls and we can use visible light for fibre optic communications. This information could be sent as analogue signals or can be converted into digital signals like digital radio. So what are analogue signals and digital signals? Why are digital signals better for sending information? And how do we convert from analogue to digital signals? So firstly, what are analogue and digital signals? So what is an analogue signal? Well, if you take somebody speaking into a microphone, those are sound waves and the microphone changes those sound waves into electrical signals. And those electrical signals look like this. As you can see, the voltage varies continuously against time and they can have an infinite number of values. So analog signals vary continuously against time and they have an infinite number of values. Digital signals, however, can only have two values, one or zero. So this is what a digital signal looks like against time. So to recap, digital signals only have two values. That's one or zero, which we can also call on or off. Secondly, why are digital signals better for sending information? So how are analog signals transmitted? Well, a good example is to look at radio. We'll look at how it works with analog signals and then look at how it works with digital signals. So if you take the presenter in the studio, when they're talking, they produce sound waves, which the microphone converts into electrical signals. These electrical signals are analog. The analog signal is added to radio waves and then transmitted uh, using an aerial and the radio waves carry this analog signal. However, as the radio waves are transmitted through the air, they spread out and so the signal loses energy and its amplitude is reduced. Unfortunately, as the radio waves are transmitted, they also pick up interference, which is called noise. And as you can see, this is added to the original signal that you are transmitting. So the radio waves carrying the analog signal are picked up by the receiver. Notice the analog signal has been reduced in amplitude and also has picked up that noise. The receiver removes the radio waves and then it has to amplify the analog signal and it also amplifies the noise. The electrical analog signals are then converted into sound waves in the loudspeaker. The quality of the sound is poor because of the noise that has been picked up on the way. So now let's have a look at digital transmission and see why transmitting signals digitally is much better than using analog signals. The starting process is the same, sound waves are converted into analog electrical signals. These analog electrical signals are then converted into digital electrical signals using an analog to digital converter, producing ones and zeros. Again, the transmitter adds the digital signals to the radio waves and those radio waves are sent out using a transmitter. The digital signals still lose energy as the radio waves spread out and travel and the digital signals also pick up noise which is that unwanted interference. You can see how it affects the ones and zeros. Again the receiver picks up the radio waves carrying the digital signal and removes the radio wave leaving the digital signal which is reduced in amplitude and has that noise added. The beauty about digital signals is they can only have one or zero. So you can clearly see 
that we can regenerate this signal because the noise can be filtered out as we know that it can only be one and zero. The signal is then amplified and now looks exactly the same as the original digital signal sent as there is no noise present. The digital signal is then converted back into an analog signal which looks identical to the signal originally produced by the sound waves. This analog electrical signal is fed into the speaker and produces sound waves of excellent quality because there is no noise. This is clearly the advantage of digital signals over analog signals. Finally, how do we convert from analog to digital signals? So the final part of this video is how we actually convert analog signals to digital signals. You don't have to be able to explain this in huge detail, but unless you understand the process, it won't make sense. In order to understand binary code, it is first helpful to remind ourselves about decimal values. We're all familiar with going up in decimal values, 0, 1, 2, 3, etc., 8, 9. That first column is worth 1, so we've got 9 ones a 9. We can't write 10 in the first column, so we have to start a new column um, with a 1, and the value of that new column is 10. So we've got 10, 11, 12, 19, 20, then going up to 98 and 99. That's the last value that we can fit into these two columns. So we have to create a third column, which is worth 100. So we get 100, then 239 will be 200s, 310s and 91s which is 239, and then the highest number we can get with those three columns is 999. So we have to create yet another column, which will be worth 1,000. So now let's look at binary that can only have two values, one or zero. So if we take binary, uh, the first number is zero, the second number decimal is 1, so we can put a 1 in that column. But then we get to the next decimal, which is 2. We can't put a 2 in the first column because we're only allowed 1s and zeros. So we'll have to put the 1 in the next column, and so that will represent a value of 2. So that column is worth 2. So we can do 3 in those two columns because we'd have 1, 2, and 1, 1, which would add up to 3. When we get to 4, we have another problem because we can't have two twos. So we've got to make another column and put a 1 there, and that column would have a value of 4. So 5 would be 1, 4, and 1, 1. So that would be 1, 0, 1. 6 would be 1, 1, 0. 7 would be 1, 1, 1, which is 1, 4, 1, 2, and 1, 1, which adds up to 7. Again, we've filled up those three columns with 1s, so for 8, we'll have to go to a further column and make that a 1, so that column would have a value of 8, and then we could do 9, 10, 11, and 12, etc. So how do we convert our analog signal into a digital signal? Remember, our analog signal has a voltage which varies continuously against time. The first thing we do is we divide the amplitude up into voltage levels of equal voltages. The next thing we do is we sample this analog signal at fixed time intervals. So the first sample at time zero would be a value of 1. The next sample is 2. If we sample again at the next time interval, that is 4. Again, at the next equal time interval, we have a value of 5. And the next time interval again, we have a value of 5. Then next time interval, we have a sample value of 1. 
and then the next time interval we have a sample value of 2. So we now have to convert this analog voltage value into a binary code. So the first one, 1, will be 0, 0, 1. Our second value, 2, will be 0, 1, 0. The next value, 4, will be in binary 1, 0, 0. Then 5 will be 1, 0, 1. The other 5 will be 1, 0, 1. And so on. Finally, we have to convert this binary code into a signal, so that will be 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, and so on. This digital signal is then transmitted. So now you understand analog to digital conversion in detail, how would you explain it simply in an exam? First, you need to say the amplitude of the signal is divided up into regular voltage values. Secondly, the analog signal is then sampled at fixed intervals of time. Finally, the sample voltages are converted into digital code of ones and zeros. And that's analog to digital conversion summed up nice and easily. So finally, we have to look at what broadband is and how it's transmitted using both fibre optics and copper cables and why fibre optics are better. So firstly, broadband is a system that gives rapid internet access through copper cables using electrical signals, optical fibres using light or satellites using microwaves. All of these use electromagnetic waves and they have a very wide range of frequencies this is why it is called broadband, because of the broad range of frequencies, or the broad band of frequencies. So of course they don't send one signal down a cable or fibre optic, they send thousands of signals from different sources down the same cable. So how do they do this? Well they do this by a technique called multiplexing. You just have to recognise the word and understand what it means. You don't have to know this in any great detail. So what they do is they split that broad band of frequencies into separate small bands, and each band carries a separate channel of data. So here, in this example, we've got three signals of different frequencies, and they send those down the fibre optic in different bands or channels and then they come out the other end as separate signals. Now of course if we're talking about fiber optics then it's light so it would use light of different frequencies for each channel or band. Sometimes in mark schemes you see them you see the word using different colors of light. Remember that different frequencies of light have different colours as well and therefore you could say different colours rather than frequencies. Finally a misconception is that broadband is always digital. Broadband can be analogue signals or transmitted with digital signals. Now we know that modern fibre optic cables are much better than the old-fashioned copper wires for transmitting broadband. But why? Well, to understand this, you need to remember that copper wire transmits broadband using electrical signals and optical fibres transmit broadband using light or infrared. So what are the advantages of using optical fibres rather than copper wire? You'll notice in each of these we're going to be stating a fact and then saying why it's an advantage. This is called a linked pair and this is how you need to answer questions in your exam. So the first one is, the signals can carry more data. And the linked pair with that is because the bandwidth is greater or frequencies are broader. The second one is, it is more secure because light cannot be hacked. Electrical signals give out electromagnetic radiation, radio waves, which if you put it in, detector next to the copper wire, you can pick up that signal. That doesn't happen with light. 
light also does not pick up noise, whereas electrical signals pick up noise from electromagnetic radiation and radio waves. So light is not affected by noise, so the quality of the signal is better. Also, when fiber optics are joined together, the digital signal can be regenerated so there's no loss in quality. Because light is of a much higher frequency than electrical signals can be, it can carry data faster. You have to be careful, we don't mean it travels at a greater speed, but the rate at which data is transmitted is faster, so you get more data per second delivered. Finally, fibre optics uh, do use digital signals, um, and so uh, when the signal comes into your house to, for computers, it doesn't need to be converted because it's already a digital signal and computers use digital signals. So what are the disadvantages of using optical fibres rather than copper wire? Well, first of all, glass is brittle, so can easily be broken, as copper wires can be bent. Secondly, it's really easy to join a copper wire together. You just need to screw the two parts together um, using a connecting block. Whereas joining optical fibres, glass fibres together, is very difficult, so it's expensive and needs specialist equipment. Finally, when you do join fibre optics together to make longer fibre optics, then if the joints are poorly made, you get a loss in signal or the signal transmitted is poor. So this now covers everything to do with analog and digital communications and broadband and fiber optics. I'm going to leave you with the specification points here, read through those that come and you'll see that we've covered everything in this video.